2009 and early 2010 saw many of Britain's drivers battling extremely wet road conditions. Most of us have hit a stretch of waterlogged road and experienced, to a greater or lesser degree, a loss of control of our vehicle. This phenomenon is known as aquaplaning. And it happens when the tyres of a car are no longer capable of clearing the water from their path. And as a result, the car lifts off from the road and begins to skid on top of the surface water. And when that happens, neither braking nor steering have any effect whatsoever. I'm going to find out how maths can explain why this happens and how we can keep ourselves safe in the wet. Here at the Motor Industry Research Association, they're well placed to analyse aquaplaning. Not surprisingly, 11 major tyre manufacturers have research facilities here. And I'm visiting one of the leading team's racing headquarters. Well, on the racetrack in dry weather, the drivers need slick tyres that have no tread pattern, so they've got the maximum contact area to transmit the power and the torque of the racing engine to the road. However, in the rain, you need to have the grooves in the tyre and a different compound of tyre to evacuate that water, and that gives it the maximum grip in the wet weather. Do the same principles apply to the tyres that we use? The most important things are to have the right tyre pressure, good tread pattern, but also tread depth. So if I have this indicator, that means I'm OK? Well, it's a good indicator, but there's still vast differences between tyres that are on sale in the UK at the moment. Fortunately, from 2012, tyres will have to have a label like this on them, and that's why we really welcome this legislation. So I have very safe tyres, but how fast do I need to travel in order to force my car to aquaplane? Well, here comes the maths bit. I have found a formula first published by NASA in 1963 in research about the safety of aircraft landing on wet runways and that formula states that the critical speed for aquaplaning in miles per hour is nine times the square root of the normal recommended tyre pressure in PSI. Okay, I have a PSI of 36 and the square root of 36 is 6. So if we multiply 6 by the NASA factor of 9, we get an aquaplaning speed of 54 miles per hour. Actually, that sounds quite fast. Luckily, I have an expert on hand. Two times British auto test champion Alistair Moffat is going to help me safely put this formula to the test. 30, that's it, keep steering straight ahead. Uh, At both 30 and then 40 miles an hour, I still felt in control of the car. But as we approached NASA's 54 miles per hour, things got interesting. 50, 50 55. 55. This time you're going to feel the car lift up on its oh! As we begin to aquaplane, the car is lifted off the road and the drive wheels begin to freely accelerate as the vehicle itself decelerates. So, when we exit the water, the tyres suddenly regain traction with a bump. Oh! There you go. <laughs> I really felt that. I tell you what else happened. That speedo went a bit strange. With the wheels spinning about 10 miles an hour faster than the car, we definitely aquaplaned at 55 miles per hour. Top marks to NASA. Of course, in practice, many variables influence aquaplaning. So, what practical tips can keep us all safe? First, be alert for increased water on the road and adjust your speed accordingly. If you do start to act the plane, don't oversteer or brake sharply. <laughs> and do you for that? <laughs> and do ease off the accelerator. Try to keep steering in a straight line. Only brake once the wheels have traction again. And the best course of action if you're driving in the wet is to take it easy. And of course, keep a close eye on the state of your tyre treads.